Good morning everyone, my name is Nick Fable. I'm a member of the Living Rock Church in Stony Stanton. Now, if I had to choose one word to summarise this year, it would be unprecedented. What a year we've all had. It's been unprecedented the number of times we've said unprecedented throughout this unprecedented year. We've had to face unprecedented situations that none of us could have expected even 12 months ago. Social distancing, changes to our weekly shopping, having to wear face coverings, do so many things differently. And to add to it all, we can't meet up with friends and family like we want to. And I know I'm not alone in feeling the extra stress and strain that this year has brought. But I do have a word of encouragement for us all. Let us start by reading one of the best known passages in the Bible, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for ever. This Psalm of David speaks of God as being a good shepherd and of his care for the sheep. The psalm starts by talking of quiet resting places and refreshing waters. But verses 4 and 5 speak of troubles, of things that disturb. It talks of the valley of the shadow of death. For us, this shadow of death might really be the shadow of death over our own life. We might be grieving the loss of a friend or a relative. It could be the loss of a job or some other problem. It may have already happened, or it could be threatening to happen, like a dark cloud on the horizon. Whatever it might be, it casts a great shadow over our life. And yet here is David declaring that the valley of the shadow of death will not make him fearful or anxious, that God's rod and staff brings him strength. You see, David had learned to trust God so fully in every situation. David knew that God was in control, that God was leading him, even in the valley of the shadow of death. God would lead him through and out the other end. Let me tell you that whatever situation we find ourselves in, God can use it. I'm not saying that God brings trouble on us. God doesn't lead us into the valley of the shadow of death, but we need to learn to walk through it. God doesn't bring trouble on us. No, we live in a broken world and there's enough trouble going on around us. So God doesn't bring that trouble on us, but he can use that trouble to help us learn more about him and our place in him, and importantly, his strength in us. In God's economy, nothing is wasted. Everything can be used by God for good. As a young boy, David was the youngest of brothers, the littlest, the skinniest, the one that was looked down on, not thought not much of by anybody. He spent his young life living and sleeping out in the fields, looking after the family's sheep, burning in the heat of the day and feeling the cold of the night. It must have been a lonely life, but he played music and made songs to praise God. And he grew and became stronger, but his brothers didn't notice. They still looked down on him. But God was using this time, while he was looking after the family's sheep, God was using this time to train him up for what God had planned for him. Even when the prophet Samuel brought an anointing for David, he was left out in the fields, forgotten and ignored by his family. Samuel had to ask David's father, is there no other son? And only then was David called in from the fields to receive his blessing and anointing. God did not forget this little brother. Later, David went on to become a mighty and famous man. In God's economy, nothing that we go through is wasted. Only in God's economy is being a shepherd boy a good training ground to become the greatest king of the Old Testament. And David ends this psalm declaring that God's goodness and mercy will follow him through all the days of his life. Now recently God has been telling me this too and I've started regularly thanking God that his goodness and mercy is following me and I've started looking out for his goodness and mercy surrounding me each day. And you know something? 
When we start to look for God's goodness and mercy following us, we begin to notice it more and more. Can I encourage you all to start looking for God's goodness and mercy following you all the days of your life? It will follow you, even if you are in the valley of the shadow of death. If you look, you will find his goodness and mercy following you all the days of your life. It will be there because the Bible tells us it's there. Just have a look and see. Thank you for listening. Thanks for joining us today. Search for us online and get information about upcoming events and more great teaching.